I'm Gary Mann, and I've had a lifelong obsession with classic cars. I caught the bug when I was just a small child, but since then I've been lucky enough to own and restore many of these rare beauties. Over the years I've learned how to tackle the complex mechanics of these cars, and still managed to indulge my passion along the way. But now I want to share my experiences with you, revealing the joys, the trials, and the tribulations of classic car restoration. Each episode I'll meet fellow classic car enthusiasts to hear their stories, look at their cars, and share their personal experiences. So come with me on my journey as I search from here to Europe and as far as the USA for the cars of my dreams. Discover their unique histories whilst working on them and bring them back to life. So join me, Gary Mavis, a classic obsession. Who could be so crazy as to try and restore a car as rusty and as rotted as this? You've either got to be crazy or brave, or both. Well, I did. And I've often wondered about the car's whereabouts since I sold it ten years ago. So, I tracked the car down to Graham Hunt's classic dealership in London, where the car is now currently up for sale. Very kindly, his son Will has allowed me to come and visit to see how the car and its restoration has stood the test of time. Twelve years on. Hello, old friend. No, this is exactly the way I sold it, 10 years ago. I mean, look at that, you could eat dinner off that. These inner wings, absolutely spotless, exactly how I did it. Underneath the bonnet, that's okay. Yeah, so this is the 220 engine, the 127 engine. It's the same engine that was in the 230 SL, but it's got a slightly different pump mechanism here. This is the, uh, I think they call it the four plunge or the two plunge injection pump. Whereas on the 230 SL, it's got a six plunge one. Um, but it's basically exactly the same engine. I mean, look at this. This is exactly the way I did it back in the day. Um, you've got the old fashioned brake servo unit down here which is a work of art in itself. I mean, that's like prehistoric, but works perfectly. That was completely rebuilt as well. Um, you look to this, if you just come round here, down here are the brake lines, which go across the bulkhead. They always rot away. I stripped, this was all completely empty when I painted the car. So I was able to put all brand new relays and, and pipes everything was replaced so it's all like completely brand new including the relays all brand new from mercedes benz like i said the devil's in the detail and um, something like this to detail it like this would probably take you like three or four weeks from start to finish long days but as you can see it's all worth it in the end there's nothing like a clean engine bay that you can work on you can see everything any leaks any problems this is all buttoned up perfectly and just how you want it. I think the bulkhead is one of the few things that remain. This engine is literally like brand new, completely rebuilt. Uh, the cooling system, the heater system inside the car uh, was extensively rebuilt as well. I stripped all that down. That was literally a week's worth. And I remember at the time, see these gaps here? 
you shouldn't really be that fine. But I've spent a long time just tapping the wings in, just lining everything up. It should be about this wide, but this is the way I wanted it. It just looked neater and cleaner to me. Just finishes the car off nicely. Let's take a look at the wheels here. We've got like a two piece hub. Hub cap there, and this is separate, the beauty ring as they call it. This was kind of, um, it was just for this car and the 250 possibly. Um, the rest had a one piece, but wow, how beautiful. That's like jewelry, isn't it? Fitted a new windscreen. Uh, the car had new chassis legs. Let me show you this. One of the most difficult things to get right on this car is getting the wing straight with the door, with the front wing and the sill. So this line is perfectly even. Not too wide, not too fine. I mean, look at that. As well as your door shut. So you're fettling with three or four different things. And if you just stand back a bit, you'll see what I'm talking about. See this? See how, how straight that is? And what you do, you have like kind of fine little piece of rubber here. And the same on the front wing, but nothing underneath the door. The water runs out. Very proud of that. I'll show you the sills. You can come down here. The inner sills are replaced along with the rear chassis legs. All the jacking points were replaced and then the outer sill. All the chrome is like brand new as you can see. Look at the gaps in the doors. These are all as perfect as I could get them. And here at the front. That takes a lot of work, a lot of fettling. A lot of lining up and tapping it in and looking along the body. But if you come and look at the interior. I mean look at that. Finest Italian leather. This is in the, the railway pattern here. This is all original to Mercedes Benz at the time. Uh, I got a guy in California who had the machines and he just replicated them perfectly using the correct grey and leather. Um, I mean, look at it. And everyone was against me at the time saying, you've got to put red with silver. The car was originally like a kind of, you see this rose in the background, like a sky blue, it was called Horizon Blue. And it was actually the Geneva Motor Show color in 1963 when, when this car was launched. Um, but I decided to repaint it silver and get rid of the red leather and replace it with the leather you can see now, which I think really set it off. I mean, these cars are absolutely beautiful. You sit inside the cabin. Oh, so comfortable. Look at the wood. All this wood was painstakingly rebuilt. Reveneered, relacquered. I mean, it's just incredible. Look at the detail on these cars. The pinstripe radio, the thin one. See how thin it is? Super, super rare. Beautiful controls to change gear. Look at that. Gorgeous. The lovely white ivory steering wheel. This brings back memories, it really does. If you take a look at the floors, see how they've fed. Look at that. Look at that, guys. I mean, do you get much better than that? I fitted all these. Correct soundproofing. I think it was called Satsuna, this colour of carpet. It's all correct. Wow. Now, underneath these cars, underneath the front pan, I think it was a way of reinforcing the body because it was made into, well, it's an original convertible, but when Mercedes decided to make the drop top, they had to reinforce the body so it didn't flex. So, if you look at a coupe floor, it's like six feet long from front to back, all one piece. But underneath the convertible floors, you have an extra pan 
and the steel is literally that thick and it must be part of reinforcing the whole body to stop reflection but um these are real tanks you want to take a look at the detail in the doors as well here it's a lot of work went into this it's all in the detail as they say I just left no stone unturned. The doors all shut lovely. Look at that. It's like a bank vault. Come and take a look at the wheel arches as well. Underneath here. How clean that is. And here. Take a look around the back of the car. The boot floor. That was replaced, look at that. Brand new. Exactly the way I did it. Still got the stickers here as well. The Mercedes Benz. No expense spared. And watch the way the boot shuts. These cars were just lavish with so much chrome. The way you put the petrol in. This is in here. Look at the detail on the doors as well. You got your door lock. You got your, your quarter light that brings it in and out. Your handle to close the door. Um, winder and door handle. Simple but beautiful. Beautifully thought out. Look at that. Wow. Take a look at this paperwork. There I am. Wow. See, most of my old receipts are still in here. All the MOTs. Here we go, look at this. £3,251.47. And this was, what, 12 years ago? No, 05. 17 years ago. £534. I really went to town on this car. I mean, there was absolutely no expense spared whatsoever. For this all Mercedes Benz, all the invoices 313 pounds, 277 pounds, 204 pounds, 224 pounds. I mean, it just goes on and on 219, 150, 300, 174, 189, 104. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. I think I spent about 25, 26,000 at Mercedes Benz. Um, I think those parts now, like 15 years old, will be probably four times that, so. You know, when I first completed the restoration on this, strangers had come up to me at car shows, regaling stories of a Warrington rugby player owning it in the 1970s by the name of Freddie Durante, and racing his colleague, who also had an identical 111 convertible through the streets of Warrington. <laughs> I still had the original FD number plate with his name inscribed. I hope you've enjoyed revisiting this restoration as I have. You know, some are more pleasurable than others, but looking back, this was one I was particularly proud of. The idea of a classic car restorer is often thought of as a romantic dream for some people finding their ideal forgotten classic in a barn. The one from the poster on their bedroom wall as a kid is a dream come true for many. But the reality is so much different. Lying on cold, oily garage floors, cutting out rusty old panels, throwing spanners at the wall, cursing through the night, scratches, tetanus needles. <laughs> Welcome to the world of the home mechanic. So I thought it might be of interest to revisit one of the most comprehensive restorations I'd done over the last 20 years and give you a taste of that reality. 
Hard to believe, but this is the very same 1963 Mercedes 220SE convertible. Don't worry, it wasn't as bad as it looks. It was actually far worse. So we decided to start with the removal of the floors, <laughs> which didn't need much persuasion, by the way. It was so bad they could literally be pulled out by hand. Look how bad the old ones were compared to the new. But thankfully, these were all available from Mercedes-Benz, along with most of the other main panels, at a considerable cost, of course. But I had to remake some of the panels, like this sidewall from the spare wheel well. Both splash panels behind the front wheel were savable, so they were stripped to bare metal and primed ready for paint. I then hoisted the engine out, and once I'd replaced the rear chassis legs, which were completely rotted through, I was then able to fit the floors. Petrol tank was an absolute nightmare. After years of sitting about, the fuel had literally turned to peat. So after jet washing it out and resealing with tank slosh, I then stripped the tank, primed, repainted it, and four days later, voila. The boot was completely rotted through, so I acquired a good coupe boot and cut it down at the frame. Oh, by the way, notice the car on a rotisserie in the background of the picture, which on examining the original, this is exactly what they did back at the factory in the 1960s. Rather than making a new press, they simply adapted and shortened coupe boots they already had surplus at the stores, both saving time and money. The inner wings in the engine bay were completely roached out, so I replaced them both with brand new items from the factory. The box sections were unavailable, so I had to make them especially. I replaced the complete front panel in one piece, again another factory item, and then the car was ready for its brand new front wings. So I first protected them with a 3M's underseal. And with the bonnet prepared inside and painted underneath and lined up and fitted with the new wings, the car starts to look like a car once again. The suspension was completely shot. The subframe mounts were destroyed and literally came apart in my hands. The seals were also way past their sell-by date, as were the engine mounts. So once I dropped the subframe, it was stripped and painted with new components fitted. Everything started to take shape with the added reassurance when all was complete, the car would at least sit, handle and steer as it was originally designed back in the 60s. There's something very satisfying when all the grime and rubbish is removed from all parts and seeing the freshly painted components fitted with new seals and ancillaries, then refitted and correctly talked up, knowing the job was done right and no corners had been cut. The list was endless. Steering dampers, track rod ends, drop links, bushes. I'm also a bit of a stickler for using original dealer parts. I think fitting quality components can save you a lot of maintenance and an awful lot of money in the long run. With the steering column refitted, I then moved on to the engine bay, which required many hours of work, removing glue and bitumen, and eventually revealing the original Horizon Blue paintwork on the bulkhead. The relays looked like they'd been submerged in water for the last 20 years, so I replaced all of them with brand new factory units along with new screws and rubbers. I sourced and fitted the correct bulkhead covering. And with the huge network of heater pipes, brake pipes, master cylinder and using the original old style brake servo unit rebuilt by my good friend Paul Norton, I was then happy that everything looked correct and factory. The hubs were then buzzed off and painted before again being mated to a set of original Mercedes-Benz discs supplied by the dealer. And when everything was talked up to the correct specification, the area was then prepared and greased up, ready for the fitment of the new bearings. 
and new seals to be fitted. Of course, using the correct high temperature castrol grease. I always think it's nice when a section comes together, when all is new and oil and grease free. If you can hold off the impatience and take your time, you know you have the reassurance that everything's done properly and maintenance will be minimal and easy in an area that's clean and correct. And when all is back together, the new brake calipers are fitted. Along with a brand new set of Bilstein shock absorbers to complete the job. You know, sometimes you just have to take a moment and look back to when you were in the depths of despair. It's no word of a lie when I say it took me weeks of this to clean off all the components, strip and repaint. But you know what? When you step back and look at this, yeah, it was all worth it. The rear brakes were drums. They were stripped and repainted. New shoes were made, refitted, readjusted. And when everything was reassembled, that was the braking system complete. The heater system was also in need of a total refresh. I then stripped it. It was record. I resoldered the joints. And after cleaning up the brass operating valves, I fitted new rubber seals from Mercedes-Benz. For some reason, if fitted with generic seals, they simply leaked. The heater ducts were then cleaned out and rejoined. The fan was freed up and cleaned up. And after reassembly, a repaint, new hoses and clips. The matrix was then reunited with the car. The hood frame was rusted and completely seized. Miraculously, although discontinued many years ago, Mercedes-Benz found 10 brand new ones at the back of their stores in Stuttgart. Although expensive, by acquiring one I was able to save myself a lot of hard work and put my energies into other things. I then spent the next couple of weeks on the arduous task of lining up the panels until I was happy with all the gaps and the shuts and then prepared the body for paint. A guide coat was applied, so I was then able to block out any last minute imperfections. You know, the longer you take, the better the results, because in the long run, this is where all the hard work pays off. I then painted the car in the desired Mercedes Silver Metallic DB180, followed by a Sickens two-pack lacquer. Because of the sheer length of the car, I decided to paint the doors and the boot off the car. It was also better for accessibility. It was a situation where everything just fell into place. Conditions were perfect and I was just thrilled with the results. It was perfect timing when the seat covers arrived that I'd ordered a few months earlier from a firm in Hollywood, California. They also came with new horsehair pads for the seats and were accompanied by five matching hides with which I was able to retrim the windscreen surround and dash and also make and recover new door panels and rear panels and retrim the entire rear hood recess. I especially chose this firm, which were old school, because they used original patterns, materials, and correct machinery from back in the day. Here you can see the entire brand new hood recess panel that had fitted. I think I managed to acquire the very last one in existence from the Mercedes-Benz factory. When you see it all upholstered in the cognac leather with the seats and the carpets, I'm sure you'll agree it complements the silver paint beautifully. You know, everybody was against me using this combination, but after completing the car, I read in Vogue that Ralph Lauren had ordered one back in the day from a New York dealer in exactly the same colours. That guy had taste. So I knew he'd made the right decision. Unwrapping the new bumpers and horns was like Christmas Day. As I've said in an earlier programme, when all the hard work is done, this is the reward. No more oil and grime and grind and metal, just a lovely clean workspace to leisurely put the smile back on the car's face. The eyes go back in and it's lovely re nose to finish the job.
So as I said, along with the boot, the doors were painted off the car. So when I'd fitted the soundproofing inside the doors, I then refitted the window mechanisms to the doors and the rear quarters. And after fitting new seals, I fitted the glass into the channels. After everything was greased up, of course. With all the stuff put back in, the doors were a ton in weight. And it was touch and go, making sure while refitting the doors didn't catch the front wings. But it was job over. It was back on with the boot. And after carefully reuniting the car with its rebuilt engine, I was on the home straight. And so an entire year's work comes to an end. In the coming weeks and future episodes, we can maybe step back and revisit some more. But all said and done, do you think it was crazy? Or was it all worth it? Thank you for watching this episode of Gary Mather's Classic Obsession. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and join me next time when I visit classic car expert Ian Tyrrell to get some classic advice. Right, you're getting too terrible for me now. <laughs> <laughs>